Hey everybody, we're doing something slightly different this time. I'm going to run through the major feature updates in Foundry 0.5.6 and show some clips of how they work. I'm not going to hit everything, so be sure to check out Atropos's post that details everything, uh, which I'm going to link down below in the description. Now, my goal for this is to make it clear, but not do a deep dive into everything like most of my other videos. So if you'd prefer one of my normal 20-minute screeds on a subject, please feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what it is. Uh, and I may dive into it later this week or post about it on Twitter or just mess around with it and talk about it in Discord or something. Uh, anyway, for anyone that is new to Foundry, keep in mind that this is an even release. Note the 0.6 at the end of the version number up above. And... That means that it's a new feature and a code refactor release. And new features and code refactors and just pretty much any work on software means bugs. So what that means is if you have a game tonight, do not update. There's no shame in waiting for the 0 0.5, 0 0.7 release, which should have most of the bugs ironed out and be an overall safer, easier update than this one. Let everybody else do the alpha testing for you. Now that we've got all of the fine print out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. So first thing is that mouse interaction is way more consistent than it used to be. Now you can select not just groups of tokens, but groups of tiles and drawings. And once you've got them selected, you can move them, you can lock them, and you can toggle their visibility in the same way. And you can do all of it uh, when multiple are selected as well. Now every silver lining needs a cloud and tiles can't be resized as a group uh, so if that's something that you find yourself needing to do frequently, you're still a little out of luck. Now, the file picker has different views, so you can find images faster, and they're lazily loaded, so you bandwidth the pride folks don't have to suffer. Now, if you don't know what lazy loading is, it basically means that Foundry is aware of where in the list you are, how far you've scrolled, and it will only load the assets up to the point where you've scrolled and a little bit beyond that. So as you start to scroll further, it will load more assets, but it prevents you from having to download all of the images in a folder uh, just by switching over to one of these views, which should make it a little bit faster for everybody. Now, for all of my fellow folder structure obsessives out there, uh, you can now create a directory in the file picker. You better make sure that you want it though, as you can't delete it inside of Foundry. You're gonna to have to go to the Foundry data folder and delete it yourself manually instead. Uh, keeping with file picking, you can also blacklist paths so your rascally players can't access them and see that Tarask token that you bought. Uh, if you don't like hidden functionality that you have to know a secret incantation to use, then you'll be happy to know that the tracked resource in the combat tracker now has a dropdown for choosing what you wanna track. If you don't know what the tracked resource in the combat tracker is, you are not alone. It's a kind of hidden bit of functionality that I went over in my Foundry Combat Basics video, but as a quick tip, you can track something like HP or AC or something like that, whatever you want, on a per character basis that will show up next to them in the encounter tracker. Up next are rollable tables, which have gotten a complete facelift, and I won't talk too much about them right now because I've got a video that I've been working on the content for, but I wanted to get this update to come out because I knew there were going to be changes to rollable tables. Uh, but the basics are that rollable tables now return a single card in the chat instead of one for the roll and one for the result, which means you can better control the privacy of a roll and the result. Uh, so your players won't see the roll and they won't see the result if you don't want them to. And uh, beyond that, the cards are also just generally much more informative. You can also have overlapping results. So a certain role may return three items instead of just one. This should be great for making randomized treasure chests or monster encounters or anything like that. Now, if you rolled privately, not just for rollable tables, but for normal rolls, uh, and you wanted to see if you got a certain result or if you just kept rolling until you got the result you wanted, uh, you can now right click on that private role in chat and send it to the public chat where your players can see it. And for everybody that is using S3 to store their files, you'll be happy to hear that you can use wildcard notation to set icons now. Uh, for those of you scratching your heads and wondering what wildcard notation is or what S3 is, well, I won't explain what S3 is, uh, but wildcard notation basically means that if you have a group of tokens in a folder and they're named something like villager-number, 
dash one dash two dash three uh, you can set the file path for an actress token to go to the directory where you have them all and set it to be something like villager dash asterisk dot png or dot jpeg or whatever file type they are and foundry will randomly grab one of the images that matches that path and matches that kind of wildcard notation and randomly select it whenever you pull one of those actors out onto the map so you can get a little bit of variety without any effort when you're placing villagers around in, in random places. Uh, I'm not a cool kid and I don't use S3 so unfortunately I can't demonstrate it but it's there for you now. Last but not least are a couple of minor quality of life improvements that I think are still worth noting and that is that uh, token placement has gotten a little prettier now as tokens display their accurate size when you're dragging them out onto the board. Uh, but you haven't placed them yet. So if you have double wide tokens or you have a massive blue dragon or something that you're pulling out, it should display accurately before you've placed it so you can get a better view of where you're putting everything. And beyond that, uh, when you are in combat, your players can double click on any actor that they own in the encounter tracker and it will now open up to show them their character sheet, which is just a nice little thing to do if they don't think to double click on their token or something like that. Now, on top of all of these features, there were also a massive amount of uh, bug fixes and just a lot of general work that went into this update. So uh, I'm really excited to start using some of them and to stop experiencing some of the bugs like compendium linking, which I'm going to make a shout out for fixing because it was driving me crazy. Um, and uh, so I'm excited to start using some of these and cover anything that y'all might be interested in. And uh, I hope that we can all make 0.5.7 better be sure that you uh, if you experience any bugs that you post it in the discord there is an alpha channel for this update and uh, hopefully we can make 0.5.7 better together and uh, i'll catch you in the next one